Hi everyone, I'm Patrick. Welcome to my talk, Getting Started with Docker and Python, how to dockerize Python scripts and Python apps. So this talk is perfect for you if you have no or little experience with Docker, or if you want to pick up a few best practices, how to dockerize a Python script. And what we do today is we look at two different examples. So in the first one, we have a simple Python script that needs some additional dependencies. And then we learn how we can put this into a Docker container. And in the second example, we create a Python web app. So for this, we also use a virtual environment when we develop this. So this is a pretty standard use case if you work with Python. And then we learn how we can Dockerize this whole application. So yeah, this is more like a follow along tutorial rather than just a presentation. So if you have Docker installed on your machine already, then you can follow me here. And um, first of all, a few sentences about me. So my name is Patrick Lober and I'm a developer advocate at Assembly AI. You may also know me already from my YouTube channel, which is the name Python Engineer. And you can find me on Twitter with the handle at Python underscore engineer. So Assembly AI is a deep learning company and we create a speech to text API. And we use Docker for pretty much everything. So all our services are Dockerized and we also use Docker for local development. So this is pretty cool and I'm super excited to be here. So let's get started. Um, first of all, a few sentences about Docker. So I'm assuming you already know what Docker is, but just in case. Um, so Docker is a tool that lets you put your application into a container. And these containers allows you to package up the application with all the parts that it needs. So all the libraries and dependencies, and then we can deploy this as one package. And when someone else wants to use this, then she or he doesn't have to worry about installing all the dependencies first and can simply use the whole Docker container right away. So this is pretty cool. And in order to install this, you can go to the official homepage docker.com and then um, look for the Docker desktop and install this. This will also install the command line um, tool. So yeah, this is all we need to get started. And in my case, I'm using Visual Studio Code as the editor. So I also recommend to install the official Docker extension. So if you search for Docker, this should be the first result. This will just give you things like auto completion or debugging support and just makes your life a little bit easier. So yeah, go ahead and install this as well. And now let's create our first um, example. So let's create a new directory. And in here, let's create a new file main.py. And then in the terminal, I also want to cd into this directory. And I already prepared the code. So you can find this on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And yeah, so let's simply copy the whole code from the main.py file. So what this file is doing, this will scrape the IMDB top 250 movie charts and then randomly selects a movie for you. And for this, we use two third party libraries. So the first one is requests and the other one is beautiful soup. So we need to install these. And yeah, we do this in a moment with our Docker file. So one more thing I want to mention here that in this code, um, I have a while true loop that is waiting for user input. So for now I have a break statement here, so it doesn't get to this part. So, but we will also learn in a moment how we can deal with user input in a Docker container. But for now, this is without the user input. And yeah, so the first thing we do with, if we want to containerize or Dockerize our Python app is that we need a Docker file. So let's create a Docker file and this doesn't have any extensions. So simply Docker file. And you see, we already have the logo here. So Visual Studio Code knows that this belongs to Docker. And um, now as a brief explanation, so we have to differentiate between three things. The first one is the um, Docker file. Then we have the Docker image and then we have the Docker con, con 
container. So, um, and by the way, we can use comments like this in a Docker file. So a Docker file is a blueprint for building images. A Docker image is a template for running containers. And the container is then your, your running process with your application in it. So yeah, first we need the Docker file. So our temp, uh, not our template, our blueprint for creating the image. So the first thing we do is we specify a base image and you see we already get auto completion here or auto suggestions. So from, and then in my case, I use a Python base image. So I say Python and then colon, and then you can specify the specific tag you want. So in my case, I want Python 3.9. And by the way, if you want to look for other official um, Python images, then you can simply search for Python Docker. And in my case, this is the first result. So this is available in the Docker Hub. So if we click on this, then yeah, here you see all the different available tags that you can pull. And yeah, so maybe one thing to mention is that sometimes you see tags with the name Slim or Alpine. So these are more minimal packages that you um, use if you have, for example, size constraints. So you want to keep your whole package or container small, but uh, usually the recommendation is if you don't have any constraints, then just use the normal Python base image. So yeah, this is the first thing we do. And now we want to add our file into the container. So we do this with the add command. So we say add, and then you see we get source and destination. So the source is main.py, and the destination is simply a dot. So this will just be in the base folder in our container. And now the next thing to do is we want to install the third party libraries. So we can do this with the run command. And now the command is pip install and then requests and beautiful, beautiful soup for. So this is like you would enter it in a terminal. So yeah, we want to run this and install this. And now the last thing is the command that will be executed when the container is started. And in this, basically, we want to say Python main.py and run our Python script. But this will be a comma separated list. So the first string is simply Python. And then the second one is the first parameter. So this is dot slash. So in the same directory, main.py. And yeah, this is all that we need. So now we can go back to the terminal. And yeah, of course we need Docker installed. So you can check this with Docker dash V and then you see the Docker version. And now we want to build our Docker image. So after we have specified our Docker file, we can use the Docker build command and then minus T and give it a tag or a name. So in this case, I say Python IMDB and then the directory is simply a dot. So in the current directory, and now we can hit enter and this will build our Docker image. So yeah, this is already done in my case because I did this before. For you, it may take a few minutes even if you do this the first time. But yeah, and one important thing to also note here is that this will, you may also see this in the logs, step one, then step two and step three. So this will run from top to bottom and then execute all the commands in our Docker file. So yeah, the order is important here. And yeah, so now we have our image. So now we can run this. So now we say Docker run and then the name was Python dash IMDB. And then let's see if this works. So yeah, we get a movie su suggestion like it's done in the script. So yeah, this works. So now we dockerized our first Python script. So congratulations. And now one more thing I want to show you. So if I comment this out, then we have this as a 
while true loop. So here we have the while true loop that is waiting for the user input if we want another movie or not. So um, now um, we changed our file. So now we have to rebuild this. So now let's again say docker build and then our um, image. And in this case, yeah, it took a few seconds. So now if we run it like this, I think this will crash. So let's see what happens. Um, it looks a bit weird, but it's running. So let's enter something. Um, but yeah, actually it does not work. So now since we have user input, what we have to do is we have to specify additional arguments. So we say minus I for interactive and minus T for a pseudo terminal basically. And yeah, so now let's run it like this. And yeah, then we don't see any errors. So now we can say a Y for we want to continue and then we get another movie. And if we say no, then it will stop the container. So yeah, this works. And yeah, this is our first example. So let's go on and let's go to the second example. So let's create a new folder example two. And in here, let's again, um, actually let's create another folder in here and we call this the app folder. And then in here we want our main.py file. And then in the terminal, let's cd into the example2 folder. So now we see we have the app folder. And in here we now in the base of this, we again want our docker file. So docker file like this. And now for the app, we want to create a simple web app. So for this, we in, in this example, we use fast API, but the code is basically the very same if you want to use Flask um, or very similar actually. So yeah, what we um, want to do here is we have to install fast API and we also need Uvicorn as our ASGI server. So for this, I want to create a virtual environment. So let's do this in here with Python 3-m vnf vnf. And now this will create a virtual environment in here. So you already see this. And then we can activate it with dot vmf slash bin slash activate. So the command is slightly different on Windows, but I'm sure you can find this out for yourself. So yeah, so now this is activated and now we install the requirements that we want. So we say pip install fast API and uvicorn. These are the two libraries we need to install and hit enter. So yeah, so now we have this and now let's create our app.py file or our main.py file. So here I'm simply copying the example code from the official fast API docs. So it's this one and oh, sorry, I copied it in the Docker file. This is wrong, of course. So we need this main.py file. So in here, so here we simply, we create our app instance and then we define function and decorate this with app.get. And then we have another route with another endpoint. And yeah, so let's save this. And now we can already run this. And in order to run this, so you could do this in the code and say, for example, you import uvicorn and then say uvicorn.run. But we can also do this in the terminal. So we say uvicorn and then the folder or the path to the file. So this is the app folder and then the main file and then colon. And then this app is the app instance in our file. So now if we run this, then this should work already. So yeah, now it says uvicorn running at localhost port um, 8000. So let's click on this and go to this route and then we get hello world. 
And also if we go to, I think, I think it was slash items and then a number, then we get the other one. So yeah, this is working. So let's say control C and quit this again. And now we want to dockerize this. So again, we need our Docker file. And then again, we say from Python and then the same um, base image 3.9. And now I want to do it a little bit different. So um, first of all, I create a working directory. So we say work dir and then we call this um, code. So this will basically create another directory in the base directory of the container and you will see later how this looks like. So later we actually go into the container in the terminal and see at all the, look at all the different files. So yeah, we specify the work directory. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to copy and install all the requirements from our virtual environment. So first of all, we need this. So in the terminal, we can say pip freeze and then the greater sign and then requirements.txt. So this will put all the dependencies that we just installed in a file. And now we want to copy this. So um, now we say copy and then the source will be dot slash re requirements.txt and the destination will be, you see, I already get the auto completion slash code slash requirements.txt. And now we want to run this again. So we say run and then pip install. And now I want to show you one best practice. So you say dash dash and then we say no cache dash dir and then you could optionally also use dash u for or sorry it's called dash dash upgrade if you want to upgrade packages and then we say slash code slash requirements dot txt so what this will do this is specific to the pip installation command and this will basically tell pip to not use a cache. And then this allows to the a Docker cache to work better. So this can save you a lot of time when you rebuild your images. So yeah, this is a great um, best practice to keep in mind to use this option with your pip installation command. Then let's copy the app directory. So we say copy um, slash app into code slash app and now um, one more thing I just noticed I need to say pip install dash r requirements.txt of course and then as last thing we need our command so here again we want to say uvicorn and then run the um, main.py so here we say as a list and here uvicorn and then we want the same command that we have here in our history, app.main colon app. So if we run it like this, then it actually doesn't work and you will see um, why it doesn't work in a moment, but I will leave it like this. And now we can build our image, but before we do this, I actually want to show you one more best practice. And this is to use a docker ignore file. So in here we say dot docker ignore. This is similar to a dot git ignore file. So this will ignore certain files or uh, folders that should not end up in your container. For example, here we created this virtual environment, but we actually don't need this in our um, container. So we don't want to copy this whole directory. So let's um, write some file names and folders into this docker ignore. And I also already prepared this so you can find this on GitHub as well in the example two. And in here, for example, you see I have the pycache, then I have some endings like this. 
Then I have the env and venv uh, folders for virtual environments and some more files. So let's copy and paste this. So this may not be exhaustive, but this is a good starting point for Python applications. And yeah, so we use this docker ignore file. And now we can say docker build minus T and then fast API tutorial and a colon for the current directory. So let's build this. And yeah, so this is already done. So now we can say docker run fast API tutorial and let's see what happens. So we see in the terminal that this is running at localhost port 8000. But if we go to this address, then we actually see that our browser can't connect to the server. So this is actually not yet working. So we have to change a few things. So first of all, let's quit the Docker container again. And now in our Docker file, we have to specify a few additional arguments where we want to run our server. So we have to say minus minus host, and this will be 0 0.0.0.0. .0. So this is basically a placeholder address that will listen to all IP addresses on the local machine. So this will basically be our local host. And yeah, so we basically have to use this whenever we want to run a server from within a um, Docker container, so this is the same for Flask, for example. And yeah, and the next argument is the minus minus port argument. So we have to specify a port and let's use port 80, for example. And now we can build this again and then we can run it, but we also have to specify the port and map this from the container to the outside. So we do this by saying minus P and then we map the port here also to our port on the outside. So 80 colon 80. And now if we run this, then, um, we get an error and this is because I think I already had this from a previous tutorial. So let's quickly have a look here. So yeah, let's um, stop this and delete this. So I will show you this again in a moment. So um, let's clear this and try this again. So yeah, so now it's running and you see this is at 0, 0, 0, 0, port 80. But actually we can now go to localhost port 80 again. And now if we refresh the site, then we see the server response hello world. So now this is working and we successfully dockerized our web application. So yeah, now one more thing I want to show you. Um, let's um, say control C and shut this down again. So one more argument that we can use is the minus D argument and this will run the container in the background. And then we also can give it a name and say uh, my fast API container. And now if we hit enter, then we see we immediately get our console back. And if we go to the address and refresh this, then this is still up and running. So yeah, so now we can actually open our Docker desktop and in here you should also now find your container with this name, my fast API container. And yeah, so this works. And now one more cool thing um, is that if we click on this CLI, then we can actually get a terminal inside the container. So let's do this. And by the way, if you want to do this manually, you can do this with this command docker exec minus it and then you need to know the name. And by the way, if we open another um, console window and say docker ps, 
Then here we get the Docker ID starting with 923. So this is the same as this one. And then slash bin slash sh. So now we are inside the Docker container. And now, for example, if I say ls, then you see we get app and requirements. So now we are inside the working directory that we specified here. And if we didn't do this, um, then we end up in the base directory of our container. So if we go one directory up, cd dot dot, and then say ls, then we would be here. So here you see all the different folders in your Linux container, and we also see the code directory. So this is where our application is. And then again, we can cd into this and then we see our application. So yeah, this is what the working directory is doing. And yeah, so that's all I wanted to show you in the second example. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial or this talk. And if you have any questions, then let us know in the comments or the chat below. And then I hope you have a great day.